Let's move on to your third topic because it fascinates me and I'll learn from this. All right, my favorite 49ers to cover. And I got a, a, a pretty good list and it's all for different reasons. So I'll go through some, some players I like to cover. Number one, Nick Mullins. I always talk about him. But people think, might think that like me and him are real buddy-buddy because I talk about him so much that we, he's not like that. I admire Nick Mullins. He's like, he's much more mature than me. He's always working in his locker. He's always studying. And then when he rarely, when, when he gets the opportunity to play, his press conferences are wonderful. He's so prepared. He speaks in such uh, depth and specifics. He's, what, he's like, wow, like this is like talking to a coach or a future coach. Um, so I always admire how such a young man who wasn't drafted or picked to be good has uh, created a professional work ethic and willed himself into the NFL. I always admire just watching him do his job. Like, look at Nick at his locker doing his thing. Like, he's not going to let anyone pass him by. I don't. I leave him alone most of the time. It's just fun to watch him do his uh, get a uh, foothold in the league. Is he friendly? Absolutely. He, he'll come by to me and say, hey, Grant, how you doing? Which I appreciate. I don't want to be, because some of the, I think some of the players on the team might not like me um, at, at certain times, and I don't want them to, th to not like Nick Mullins because they think I'm giving him pre preferential treatment in my, in my work. So I just kind of leave him alone. But he is nice, and he comes up to me, and when we do talk, we often talk about his grandfather, Larry Mullins, who uh, is one of my best friends. We converse all the time. We email each other. Um, he sends me YouTube videos of like uh, Jewish cantors singing Yiddish. And he, <laughs> he watches all of, uh, he's gonna watch this, he watches my Periscope. So we, um, we have a mutual friend, Nick and I. His, Nikki, yes. Can't sing, sing Hebrew, they don't sing Yiddish. Okay, fair enough. Well, he's been sending me cantors singing Yiddish. I don't know where he found it. So he's got cantors singing Yiddish? He's found it on YouTube. He's gone down some type of Jewish rabbit hole that we haven't discovered yet. So I'll have wow, to ask him. And I want to say one other thing. You said people might think about Mullins. Me and him are buddies. He and I. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. <laughs> he and I. I went to you UCLA. You are an English major at UCLA, and you come out with me and him. It's terrible. I owe you a nickel for that one. All that much. <laughs> okay, who's your number two? Um, I love I love covering Kittle. He's so much fun. He always has a twinkle in his eye. He always has time. Um, he makes the interview fun. Uh, he's a little bit like George uh, Joe Staley. He's got a dry sense of humor. He's a lot of fun. Wow. I like him. And he wants, he's almost, he's just as fun and engaging outside of an interview. He'll talk to you in the locker room. He'll make a little quip uh, outside the um, facility. He'll tweet to you. He's, he has, he's a fun loving guy. He has a lot of, I like him. He's a, he's a lighthearted dude. And it's interesting. Uh, he, Right now that Buckner is gone, he's the best player on the team. Oh, yeah. Uh, whether he'll be paid that way or not, I don't know. <laughs> there could be some problems in the future. No but question. But none of that has gone to his head. He's he's a guy. He's, he's a, a guy, a former fifth-round pick who's probably made $3 million in his life, which is great, but he's not exactly set for life. He still has to keep working, and uh, he seems like he probably won't change when he gets paid. I don't think he's going to be the kind of guy who stops – working out and running when he gets $17 million a year, which is what he deserves. Okay. Well, when I get $17 million a year, you'll let me know if I change as well, right? Yeah, and you'll give me like, you know, a nickel. A nickel. Okay, okay number three. I, I really enjoy covering Richard Sherman. Um, mm. We've talked about him before being polished. You don't necessarily feel like you're having like a, a moment with someone who's letting his guard down, but his polish is so good. I mean, he, he wants to talk. He'll talk about any subject. He'll talk off the record. He'll talk uh, for five minutes. He'll talk for 20 minutes. Um, you would have really liked Richard Sherman. He's a lot of fun. And uh, whenever he talks after a game, uh, he's the voice of the team. And he's one of the better voices of the team I've ever heard from a player. One of the smartest players. I mean, he really articulates the big picture of the 49ers better than Kyle Shanahan. Really. I mean, he, he explains what they're facing, uh, what 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 they're good at, what they're not good at, how people judge them. He puts the whole thing in perspective better than anyone I've ever heard. And even recently, he talked about um, the Black Lives Matter stuff and all the things going on with George Floyd and everything he says sounds so reasonable and intelligent on every topic. I really appreciate that. I do. Is he one of the smartest athletes you've ever encountered? Oh, 
Absolutely. And his coaches will even say he's the smartest cornerback of all time, of all time. Because well, usually yeah. corners don't have to be smart. Like your job is to just chase, like just be the, be the guy who would win the game of tag in third grade. Just chase a guy around. He plays zone. So he's actually like reading plays as they happen. And he's as smart as Peyton Manning and any quarterback who's ever played. He's that smart. He can, he's, he knows, he knows the plays as well as the offense does partially because he's brilliant, partially because he went to Stanford and partially because he played wide receiver for three years in, in college. Uh, Iggy of the three you've named so far, again, I've never met any of them. The one that I would love to meet the most would be Richard Sherman. Oh. We have, we have a lot in common. You know, um, we both went to Stanford and, and we probably maybe even knew some of the same professors, although he's so much younger than I am. My professors are dead. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, uh, and you know, just the way you describe him and how I've seen him on television, he seems like a guy I would, I would really, really love to uh, know. He's a lot like John Lynch. He's a lot like John oh. Lynch. Well, John Lynch, uh, you know, I'm going to use the Yiddish word a mensch. John Lynch, again, I knew him at Stanford when he was a player. He was a mensch. He was uh, friendly. He always had time. But you know what? As a college student, he was so mature. It, it, when I dealt with him, it was like dealing with an NFL veteran. Interesting. He knew what to say, what not to say. Yep. He was so poised at 21. At 74, I'm still not as poised as he was at 21. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I got one more name. I got one more name that I really like covering. Robbie Gould. I love Robbie Gould, the kicker. Okay, so we have a little bit of history. Um, you know, for years I've tweeted and writ written about the ping pong table in the, in the locker room. I hate it, especially when they were bad. I felt like you don't get to play ping pong in the locker room when you're two and 10, you earn that. So I used to say it's a bad look. They need to get it out of there. And, um, they did it eventually get it out of there. But last year they were so good. They eventually brought it back. And, uh, I didn't know Robbie Gould knew who I was, but he walks by me. I'm standing by the, the ping pong table and he goes, Hey Grant, uh, I look at him, he says, want to play? <laughs> it's like, I know you don't like it in here. We brought it back. Do you got something to say about it now? We're really good. And I think, hey, no, I'd love to play with you, Robbie. So I accepted and he never actually followed through. So uh, he's going to have to, um, yeah, he's going to have to play me soon. Everybody there knows your name. And you want to know why? Why? Because you're the one Oh, 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 I want to be careful because some of the other people who covered the team are my dear friends. They're not as New York as you are. Of course, you're from Oakland, California, but you have me as a dad. And you have learned to be blunt and straight ahead, yeah. i.e. you will criticize them yeah. and not worry what they're going to say to you and not worry if you're going to lose page views somewhere. Right. And as a result, they know that you're the biggest challenge to them. They're athletes. They like a challenge. Uh, so they probably have, at worst, begrudging respect for you. I think that's they fair to say. They all know your name. Now, I got one, uh, one uh, the dancer. The, uh, what's the, dan who's the, well, who's the dancer? Kendrick Bourne. Kendrick Bourne. I like Kendrick oh, Bourne. Um, I, like, I haven't spent I, as much time I, talking to him. You haven't talked to him that I, much? I have, but not as much. I mean, he's been a backup for a long time. He's very enthusiastic. He's very bright. And in, in a when he does get, he does, media doesn't go to him that much. But when he does have a little bit of a, a group interview, he talks a mile a minute. He's one of those guys who is extremely enthusiastic uh, and can't, almost can't talk fast enough, which oh, is a lot of fun. Yeah. 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 And Kyle Shanahan so says he reminds him of his nine-year-old son. I could see that. There's, a, there's an innocent, um, energetic, uh, upbeatness that you, you don't see from adults. And that carries over to the dancing again yeah. because he gets so excited after a good play, he starts dancing. And in practice, he's dancing the entire time. Always Come dancing. On. He's dancing during stretching because they play music the whole time. And it's just like, he's having the best day of his life. He's in the NFL. Every day, Every day is the best day of his life. He's in the NFL. He made, remember, he was an undrafted guy. He played college football at Eastern Washington or something. He shouldn't be here. And he made it because he worked a lot harder than Dante Pettis. You know what I mean? He's one of those guys like Nick Mullins who just willed himself here and he gets a kick out of it. And I like that. Now, I, uh, I had said before of the people you mentioned, I'd, I'd love to meet Richard Sherman. I would love to meet Kendrick Bourne. Yes. Um, 
I would just love to meet him. It, you know, there are certain people we talk about who play in joy. Yes. He plays in joy. Kittle plays in joy. Steve Young. Steve Young would get blasted. Now, when he got blasted in Arizona, no, but he'd get blasted and get up, uh, Steve, and he'd be smiling. Yes. He loved it. Absolutely. And born is that way. Yep. I love players like that. Yeah. It's like we play football. It's a violent game, but I like the violence of it. That's why I play. Not because I make a lot of money, but because I like getting getting knocked in the head every once in a while. It's fun. It makes <laughs> me feel alive. 